My name is Neil Stepanov. I'm a developer and researcher at the ITMO University. Today we're going to talk about the benchmarking of SaaS solutions. I deal with static and dynamic analysis of software starting from 2015. I was involved with the Kotlin compiler. And I found several dozens of bugs, and I successfully received my PhD. Here is the plan, the problems, test benchmarking, why would we choose this, what is our benchmark capable of, and experimental runs. The existing benchmarks are not quite fit for the test quality performance analysis. Then we present our tool and the results of preliminary experiments. This is a work in progress initiative. That is, means that all artifacts, all methods are not finalized yet. I'm not going to tell you for yet another time how things are going, how vulnerabilities in our starships may lead to catastrophic consequences. Rather, I'd like to showcase an image. It illustrates a database of NVD, National Vulnerability Database, this lists the number of documented and fixed vulnerabilities over the next, the last few years. The problem is still relevant, it is still serious. If it were not serious, we wouldn't be here today. Some years ago, this problem was not yet the focus of attention. It's either apps were not tested vulnerabilities at all, or they performed some manual testing minimally, which was not sufficient. Then we proceed with methods of automatic vulnerability detection, which increases the chance of identifying critical vulnerabilities in your applications. Today there are a multitude of various methods. This slide lists the key ones, and today we are going to talk about SAST. Its key feature is that it analyzes source code without running it, without its execution, and is used for application development. The concept design of SAST, input, source code or binary, then it is converted into some intermediate representation, it can be a character, symbol, various graphs, or synthetic tree, or any kind of further custom data, which is subject to analysis. Further, outputs. You get a set of warnings, ranged, ranked by their importance and criticality. There are a number of SaaS solutions today for any modern and popular programming language. There are more popular ones, less hyped ones, freeware ones, proprietary ones, but all of them, especially proprietary solutions, share the same thing, PR. If you visit a website which is dedicated to the description of a given tool, you will see there some information. They say that their tool is the most efficient one, the most effective one, and normally this shapes ungrounded expectations, which are actually do not stand the test when faced with reality. We put together a large team working on the banking service. We have budget allocations, we have resources allocated, and they tell us, please introduce a SaaS solution. We don't want to become victims of aggressive advertising. We'd like to assess objectively which of the tools is better. We will take into account lots of specifications and characteristics, but the key one will be the quality of analysis, whether a tool can identify and detect vulnerabilities. How do we characterize the quality? Being able to identify true positive cases, real vulnerabilities, and efficient 
significantly reduce number of false positives. Let me drill down on this one. For instance, we have implemented a service. We purchase the most expensive, the coolest SaaS solutions. We apply this and we get 1.5k warnings. We feel so sad. Oh, we roll up our sleeves. We started working on these warnings. It turns out that 99% of cases as signaled by SaaS cases are virtually impossible in practice. So false positives, it is also another important indicator. A high number of false positives leads to the impossibility or practicality to use a tool in production. For proper quality of analysis of SaaS solutions, we require independent benchmarks. And at present, there are some of them. I'm sorry, I am, I'm skipping ahead. What would a perfect be SaaS benchmark look like to assess the quality of SaaS solutions? It would have two parts, the synthetic component, just a couple thousand simple, but at the same time complex tests which make use of various language capacities of the target language. And we would love this tool to run the existing elements differently, so we can see what's the difference. It should be based on real-life projects. These are previously detected vulnerabilities. This is a way to see how SaaS tools work on actual production code. Synthetic texts are fine, but we'd love it to run on actual code, real-life code. It should run within a certain infrastructure. It must be easy to install and use and run and get some human readable output data, which leads to certain consequences and conclusions. There is a certain number of benchmarks today. However, the vast majority of them are language specific. And it is normally designed for C languages, or C or C, because these are one of the most popular languages in such research. Sometimes there is no infrastructure in place. Or like Juliet, it is a benchmark, as you know. This is a benchmark that works with all tools, but it's way too simple. Based on this review, we can come to the following conclusion. The existing benchmarks do not cut it for a full-fledged SAST comparison. It takes a new solution. And we are introducing such a solution today. We tried to make our perfect benchmark closer to the perfect image. I showcased a few slides before. It has two components. The synthetic component, which relies on demonstrating the difference between the SAST performance, and the set of real-life projects which can actually includes various CWEs. There is a version that contains a vulnerability and another version with the vulnerability already fixed so that we can run a false positive test. This features full-fledged infrastructure which is easy to add to your tool and run some experimental checks. So, how do we shape the synthetic part of it? As mentioned earlier, the formation part is designed to showcase the difference. Why would we see the difference? Because this is a way to identify how they perform in various tests. And second, this is a way to identify which SAS tools are better fit for which vulnerabilities. Which structures are they unable to process? This would be useful for both the developers of such tools and uh, coders who use such SaaS tools. For instance, we realize that the SaaS tool we're using does not support embedded ifs. It's either we use another tool or we ban uh, embedded ifs. If you use embedded ifs, you will get fired. The synthetic component of the benchmark. There is one way you can roll up your sleeves, sit down and write several thousands of simple but at the same time complex tasks. But this is very labor-intensive and it requires competence in various programming languages. And you may probably feel lazy to do so. I said, okay, let's try another way. So we got this idea. What if we take a ready-made testing software, piece of software, and modify it in some way? And probably this modified version of software will 
highlight some interesting behavior. So I took three SAS tools, probably heard about them. I took a chunk of simple code, which includes SQL injection, SQL injection. SPARAM is attributed data from external query. With this example, all SAS tools dealt, could, could deal with this if case, pretty simply. But if we add an if, which is always true, so param is always an empty string. So it doesn't impact SQL queries in any way. So two out of the three tools uh, result in a false positive. That's uh, 180 turn, I thought. And let's take a test piece of software, a test program. Let's modify it somewhat. Let's run the analysis. Now let's then compare the results, the outcome, when dealing with the modified program version. If they are different from the initial ones, probably in this case we have found a potentially interesting test program which will be part of the final version of our benchmark. Good. Next up, how do you possibly modify software? There are two approaches out there. It's either we do this manually, again, this is labor-intensive and you feel lazy, and the second method, why would you need this at all, if we have fuzzing? Please raise your hand if you heard about fuzzing. Oh, that's very interesting. But probably not all of us know this anecdote regarding the way it was actually came into existence. It was a dark, rainy night. Professor Dr. Barton Miller, who works at the Wisconsin University, was connected to his computer from home via a telephone line connection. With every burst of thunder, the telephone connection would break down due to static. <laughs> Professor Button Miller was surprised by that. The next day he came to the university and he suggested the following to his students. Let's take a set of Unix utilities and let's feed them with data they do not expect. And the results were outstanding. They discovered lots of bugs and even potential vulnerabilities, which might have been used by attackers. To hack into these Unix-based utilities. This is how fuzzing brought, was brought into existence. You know, we all know FL. It took several years to develop mutation fuzzing. Initially, for fuzzing, data would be generated from scratch. Mutation fuzzing is a, a bit of a more advanced version. So once we're in the software and the data starts mutating, if a function takes it, we generate 42, which goes pretty in deep, but starting to add one or detract, deduct, detract one, hoping that this data will bring about certain results. Respectively, you can mutate software in the same way. This is structured representation. It's much more complex than that, but still it's feasible. So the mutants we are getting from the test, the initial software, they need to be systematically in syntax compliant. Because they must be unique, because no one wants the same kinds of mutants. And you might think, oh, you're, I'm telling you stories but about fuzzing, but how does it work in practice? As mentioned before, I have extensive expertise in the application of mutation fuzzing. Using mutation fuzzing, I was able to find tens of thousands of compiler errors we posted many of them. Around 10% of all errors, all bugs found in the compiler backend were found by the mutation fuzzing. And they're still trying to support it and use it to test new versions of the compiler. 
All right. Probably imitation fuzzing is going to work. But the next question is how we're going to mutate the test software. Let's write a list of regex which change constants in the software or like entangle strings, replace them, swap them. Probably this will identify some bugs some divergences, but the efficiency is going to be pretty low. Okay, you say, let's use the structured code presentation, the abstract code tree, syntax tree, let's enrich it with types for static languages, let's run some cooler mutations, let's like, uh, mix these nodes and functions I might say yes, it may work, but efficiency is still doubtful. And third, modification using templates. Let's drill down this one. It's much more interesting. Oh. Wrong slide. Okay, templates. Templates are pre-configured structures, which are added to a random point in the test software. A key feature is the type-based cells. You can see this in the left-hand side of the slide. Then they are filled with information about variables and expressions available in the scope of where this template goes, where it is inserted. I'm going to showcase some examples further for greater clarity. This is a pretty simple way to ensure a variety of language-based Teachers uncover, detect specific behavior and make this a very cool syntax based benchmark. What does the mutation fuzzing algorithm look like? We have the test software where tools operate in the same way and a set of templates. Into this test software, we insert a template or a sequence, a sequence of various random templates. Then we check, we verify whether the resulting mutant is compilable, can be compiled. Then we take a bunch of such mutants and we run a sampling on them, which is composed of our SAS tools. Then we check whether the behavior differs depending on a specific SAS tool on these mutants. If so, this all goes into the result storage. This result storage is accessed by a human and manually they pick and choose the most interesting test examples. And finally, they are sent to the final version of our benchmark. A case in point is a long-awaited mutation fuzzy case. I'm sorry, the listing is displayed incorrectly a little bit. It used to be fine. We have the initial function that contains the very same SQL injection. We pick a random place, a random template, we fill it with data regarding the expressions and variables taken from the scope, and we see the resulting software on the left-hand side, which may potentially uncover some interesting behavior. Apart from the predefined bodies, the block units on the, on the top right, string equals string, we can make our templates even smarter, and as the body, we can take the already existing pieces of software. In order to insert such a template, we need two spaces, block start, block end. We still need to fill out some type-based cells with information from the scope. Again, we get a test example, which might uncover some interesting behavior. Therefore, using such templates, we can further increase the variability of our benchmark and thus generating even more test cases, test examples. You may wonder, what am I supposed to do to somewhat guarantee, to somehow guarantee the fact that we cover the main language capacities of a given programming language? The answer is this. We need to write templates, for instance, for Java for the below features. This is for us to be able to state that we support the main language-based capacities of Java and we can actually test SAS tools with that. The more templates we have 
per single feature, the better it is. But you might say, you say that we people, we are lazy, we want to reduce the workload, the labor intensity. But luckily, in 2024, large language models, LLMs, are being applied to each application. But for template generations, our LLMs can deal with this pretty easily. Well, it's about syntax, correct syntax. Yeah, this can be done with specific libraries. You can also extract this from source code using pretty simple algorithm. I'm not going to dwell on this. This slide lists a case of application of a more complex template. It's on the right-hand side. Of course, it's simplified. It implements constructor chains feature of Java, the first constructor calls the second constructor. Below, in green, I have highlighted the body of the template, and the, this is what the resulting code looks like. After we have inserted, this is what the resulting code may look like once we have inserted templates. You may think that this is a pretty simple template, but not all SAS tools were capable to deal with that. I have implemented this, I hit the run button, <laughs> and then I go to bed. I get back, I go to the resulting files folder. I can't use obscenity, right? I was so much surprised. Overnight, I discovered around 1,000 interesting test software which covers various scenarios of behavior. This is the power of mutation fuzzing, I thought, and I started uh, scraping through them one by one, manually. It turned out to be not so good, because the vast majority of these tests turned out to be pretty similar to each other, which is not of interest. Those that repeat, are repeated, they contain lots of trash. These are language structures which uh, have no impact on what SAST yields. Not reduce the manual workload, this comes back to laziness. The deduction module and the duplication modules, this is good for fuzzing. I highly suggest that you use this. Briefly about reduction, I'm not going to drill down on the algorithm details. There is a test case, a test example which uncovers interesting behavior of SAS analysis. They operate according to a different principle, but this structure in yellow has no impact on the way SAS tools operate. Therefore, algor reduction algorithms automatically remove such structures from the software. Thus, we are getting a minimized test case. The de deduplication algorithm is a more important algorithm. As I said, the results folder contains 1,000 examples, and we need to categorize them somehow. Thanks to the algorithms that we wrote, all of these examples can be categorized by the dependency type, by the vulnerability type, and they can be sorted from the most interesting ones down to the least interesting ones. The most interesting ones must be the most variable ones. In terms of the template inserted, the behavior they bring about, this is how we can ensure the independent nature and uh, integrity of our benchmark. We start processing cases manually. I would like to point out another thing. For certain purposes, you can uh, set a scaling ratio for SAS tools so that the most interesting folder is filled, is populated with results where the SAS tool in question behaves differently, where he, its behavior differs from that of the others. Good. We did something for Java, but how do you adapt that to other languages? First, we need a test sampling to get started. We can use ready-made test benchmarks if it's not available at all, if it's a very 
rare language. We can use LLMs, large language models, again, to somehow make the conversion. Next, we need to adapt and get our templates again. From what they look like, it follows that they work for virtually most modern programming languages. And they can be transformed with minimum effort. Then we write, run scripts, result formation scripts. When it comes to results comparison, this is already implemented on our side. Right, examples. Divergence is identified. This is the same SQL injection case, which works perfectly for all the existing tools. We insert a template, which is a bit complex, but we use a static class field, we assign param, and we get it again. So we assign to param its value, its own value. And with this code, 50% of tools were not able to cope with it. The example with false positive. Once again, we have the same test, and in Param we give the empty line. Well, we determined it a little bit in advance, and we applied two simple functions from standard library. And today, one of four tools filters such false positive. Well, synthetical part, everything is understandable about that. Let's move to real benchmarks. It's wonderful that we have Chinese workaholics who formed a very big fo benchmark consisting of 165 projects for Java and have launched seven popular open source or free versions tools <coughs> out of 65, 165 vulnerabilities. All seven tools have discovered only 30%. On one side, 30% is good. On the other side, there is a way to move. But how can we get these uh, benchmark and these results? So we have a lot of uh, vulnerability databases. You can go there and collect information about names, versions, discussions, uh, classes of vulnerabilities that were discovered in them. But as a rule, there are no links. But thanks to other good guys, there are scripts so that all these names and versions would be converted directly to links, and we build two versions of the project, with vulnerability and with fixed vulnerability to check false positive. Between these two versions, we build diff, and then a person comes, expert group from three people that conduct cross-validation, which makes conclusion that vulnerability is available and vulnerability is located in this particular place. Then, for these projects, we form Sarif tagging. I'm not going to speak about it. Sarif has a very good and popular format. Many SaaS can do it, and it has a very good... Uh, color coding in GitHub. This idea was taken for the foundation, and as a result, it's more automated from the approach point of view. And these databases will be extracted and extended by us. Right now, a couple of words about infrastructure. How can we add into our infrastructure interesting SaaS tools? You have to write a run script, script for a Sarif conversion if your SaaS uh, tool doesn't know how to do that. And mapping in CV. What is CV mapping? You don't know that. Well, I have two news. Bad news that most of SaaS tools, possibly the one that you're interested in, have their own format for output of the result. They have the rule of how did it work and the place it did work. But most of them have CV mapping. CV is a database of vulnerabilities which support is supported and developed by experts in the area of uh, cybersecurity. And this is an attempt of categorize existing vulnerabilities. 
databases. This database is structured, and on side you see an example how our SQL injection can be mapped in CVE class, CWE class, which is called that improper neutralization, which tells you that somehow data is not properly neutralized for the request. So the infrastructure is available, we launch our tools, we parse our serifs, and then we calculate matrices. We calculate number of vulnerabilities that we have discovered, we calculate the number of vulnerabilities that we produced, but they are not vulnerabilities, I mean false positives, and number of vulnerabilities that we have omitted. On the basis of this, we form two numbers, fullness, precision, and on the basis of them, there is an F-score as an attempt of balancing the fullness and precision of these tools' operation. That's it. Basically, I've described to you the benchmark. So we have formed experimental version of the benchmark. We've been writing 30 templates for the experimental benchmark for Java. Then we have defined 30 different templates. We took 50 test programs from which 10% are vulnerable, and they have approximately one vulnerability as a SQL injection. Then we take 165 other projects. Then we've been working with it, then we connected it to our infrastructure, and these 160 projects are totally different directions. They contain difficult uh, vulnerabilities, typical ones, and we've launched uh, several popular tools out there. Results, blue column is the fullness, number of vulnerabilities or percentages of vulnerabilities discovered. Red column, it's precision. How many vulnerabilities that were reported by the tool are truly vulnerabilities? And F-score, the green one, is the describing parameter. But in our synthetic benchmark, it wasn't able to do everything with Enercoop. And it has the highest, f -skip has the highest uh, score because it has less false positives. In real projects, not everything is as good. The best one was called QL, which found 14% of vulnerabilities, but everything is a little bit better from the point of view of precision. On this slide, you can see distribution through discovered vulnerability classes in real projects. And as you can see here, the best one, vulnerabilities are discovered by the class 707 that we've been looking at, or 664. The wrong work with resources. You have initialized them properly, you have not released something, and because of it, we have some vulnerability. What I wanted to bring to your attention. That even on this graph, you can see that different tools work better with different types of vulnerabilities. There's not one tool that wins everybody. Different tools work differently. Okay, let's speak about analysis a little bit. Data analysis. Synthetic benchmark has to be extended. We have to write more templates, generate more clever code so that we find more deviations in work of different SaaS tools. However, the benchmark which is available has discovered a lot of false positives in those tools that we've been researching. In other words, in our benchmark, they give much more false positives than in original VASP. Well, why haven't we discovered, not we, them, why haven't they discovered 70% of vulnerabilities in real projects? First of all, for some vulnerabilities, they have not defined rules well, minority, 4-5%. About 70% are insufficient quality analysis of the source code. It's the area for improvement of the analysis, analysis quality for SaaS tools. And number three, it's all the rest. And down here, we are looking in theoretical SaaS limitations and vulnerabilities 
which are very difficult to find by it. <coughs> and with the help of Benchmark, we can reply to a big number of questions. What SaaS doesn't work for me? Which combination of tools can be used in my project as the best one? Which rules should be disconnected so I wouldn't have 1,500 false positives of this tool knowing that another tool finds much better these type of vulnerabilities and performance analysis will give you information about in which uh, cycle of development uh, you have to apply different SaaS solutions. For example, Simpra is very fast one. It can just be launched every day compared to code QL, which can work for a long time with big projects. What are the plans? First of all, we are going to extend the synthetic part of the benchmark and the collection of templates, uh, methodologies, possibly somehow will be improved. <coughs> also, we will receive realization in forming of a real part of the benchmark to have less manual work. Then we'll complete benchmark for Java, then we'll make for Python, Sharp, Go, big experimental research, and then we'll publish possible results. Experimental benchmark I was speaking about was already published. You can go to repository and they have all the readmissions, all the scripts and even contacts in readme or of the organization if you want to write me a couple of nice or not really nice words. Well, everything is absolutely free. Well, that's the end of my presentation. If you have a desire to evaluate my presentation, scan the QR code and you can write me. Thank you very much, Daniel. And right now we have the Q&A session. Uh, we'll read the questions from the board. Okay, I'll stand from the other side. Wasp Zap. Is it SAST? Wasp Zap. It's not in the scope of presentation. It's a little bit further tomorrow. There will be a workshop about SAST, and you can ask this question. Can you do attacks about against IP infrastructure to SAST analyzers through the rules with exploits? Possibly, yes, but modern SaaS tools, especially proprietary ones, have closed rules. That's why it's complicated. What is worst for SaaS? False positive or false negative? Well, we need a balance. We want to show true positive as maximum as possible to find real vulnerabilities and minimization of false positives. While most all domestic SAS analyzers for writing custom rules offer only regular expressions. Possibly because they don't have a solo type of analysis. Or these are the rules that will be written and it's difficult to adapt them and it's difficult to write them. Which chair should be selected? I mean, true positive or increase the true positives? Well, the balance is the most important. You have to work in both directions like Jean-Claude Van Damme on these two trucks try to move into the happy future. Is it possible to use rules written by artificial intelligence? Speaking about templates, ah, rules. Well, this is also not in the scope of my presentation. This is related to the work of SAST Analyzer. We should do separate experiments and research from the point of view of how the LLM or another AI can write rules for the SAST. Maybe it's not going to work, but we have not conducted such experiments because we're not developing SAST. We are comparing them. How can one fix false positives on slide 22 with a scale? How can we fix false positives? Oh, долго. I просто не помню, что там.
Есть возможность еще раз презентацию посмотреть. Есть возможность посмотреть презентацию еще раз. Слайд 1 и 2. Никак. No way. Что делать с мультиязыковыми проектами, если нет инструментов? Я уже говорил по результатам тех экспериментов. И тоже нужно учитывать их перформанс, но для каждого... You can take into consideration their performance, but for every module, for every language, One should take a tool or even a combination of those, which is going to work much better for different type of vulnerabilities. How the duplication should be conducted? Yes, I have prepared the site, and it's a very interesting question. I thought that you will ask me, and I have prepared... Я подготовил заранее слайд. Это достаточно интересно. И редукция... The slide, it's a very interesting deduction, deduplication, and have assumed, well, I didn't want to press too much on you. But it's very interesting. Okay. Мы знаем, какой... First of all, we didn't know which type of vulnerability was in the initial test example. So, speaking about categorization of vulnerabilities, it's understandable. Then we filter obvious duplicates. When for the same test example, we have applied similar sequence of mutations, same templates have been applied, and we received same deviations in the work of the SAS tool. We filter it by 50%, even 70%. Then, for every test program, we fix the sequence of mutations. We look which templates were introduced. Эта программа, этот мутант получил, получил. So that this mutant, this program would happen. Для всех примеров. Then we take all this information for all these examples, and we apply this much patch. Алгоритм, который вычисляет. This is an algorithm which calculates. Используем для вычисления меры сходства. And we use it to calculate the level of similarity between text, and then the algorithm of remote point in the left part of our categorized list. We send those test programs which have these sequences of forming these test programs and they are very different. I hope I, I described it in a more understanding way. Then also we have to take into consideration the scaling coefficients of the tools in this assessment. How SAS tools can be learning to work with uh, non-standard TCL languages. This is also about development of SAS tools. About adoption of the approach for the languages with non-standard grammar. This can be done for all the languages. For all the languages you can build IST, you can write templates and somehow mutate them. But how to build SAS, it's not in the scope of this presentation. Will we have source codes? What is the benchmark? If not self-written, which one of them you will recommend? Вот. Source code is available. Либо QR код. URL or QR код. Спрашивал, может сфотографировать дополнительно. Можно вообще в принципе в организации. You can take a picture of it. Несколько репозиториев. Все достаточно. Or you can go to organization. There are several repositories. It's very interesting and well described. Марка. About the benchmark. Такого, well, прям вот, чтобы есть различные там бенчмарки, которые формируются из базы. There are different benchmarks which are formed from vulnerability database. NIST, benchmark, Juliet, benchmark, which is a very simple benchmark for a lot of programming languages. So that in order to have some ultimate benchmark, which I would recommend, no, there is no such thing. Заново вспомнить мою либо Either you can remember my spreadsheet that I was showing or look at Lawson uh, lists with different benchmarks and it all depends on what do you really want to test. Benchmarks usually have results. How in case with mutants can you solve problem with false negatives? Well, a good question. This is the best question I'd like to say right now.
Финальная версия бенчмарка формируется... The final version of benchmark is formed by a human being. Uh, we have an expert group which does the cross-validation and they say... And they come to the conclusion whether this mutant has vulnerability or not. And therefore, they form the tagging. It is done by expert group. However, one can also simplify a process. We have not been doing that. If you apply dust to try to generate exploits for the mutants, and if exploit has been generated, this can be done for Avast. Then we can say, yes, in this mutant, we do have error vulnerability. If not, then still one will need manual processing. In other words, expert group. Tools finished. No rules, but rules out of the box do not work very well. Did you write rules for some prep for your cases? Well, in a synthetic benchmark, only SQL injection, everything is very simple and everybody has a big number of rules. This is that type of vulnerability. As for CVE benchmarks, we're not interested that SAS2 would become a winning one. We're just checking them in real conditions. Why do we have to write any uh, rules for SIMRED to make it win? We're absolutely independent. We're just looking how the tools are working. On the slide 32, we could see the scheme which has the stage of compilation after in-building the templates. It's a syntactic test. How the semantic test happens for the code acquired? Through the compiler, same way. If the code is compiled, then semantically and statistically it's correct. How it behaves in the right time, it's not as important because we have SAS. And then person will validate the result. Is it rational to use SAS for small projects? SAS? Yes, it's rational to be used for anything. Even in smallest libraries, uh, they have uh, vulnerabilities which can be exploited by anybody. Did you conduct analysis of the complexity of exploitation of 70% non-discovered vulnerabilities? Possibly this can be covered by other classes of tools. Well, it's the same, a very labor-intensive process and the minimal research Minimal research have been conducted. So those 70% of discovered vulnerabilities, and I did have slides, some people just have problem with this theoretical SAS limitation, and some of them can be cannot be discovered completely. Some of them don't have rules, and some of them are being exploited, yes. Maybe there is some kind of an error out there, but vast majority of results are correct. So it happens that every tool interprets results his own way. Maybe it is easier to model tests on the basis of developed software. They interpret in their own way, but there are certain mappings and we compare CV classes. CV class unites a big number of direct vulnerabilities, real one, and there well, we try to change these deviations for tools. We compare CV classes. And what is the most interesting inside of this folder? The same thousand of warnings, but they all divided by CV. So these thousand warnings have to be manually uh, divided, but they are divided by categories. The most interesting warnings, they are maximally different and they lead us to maximally various results. We manually separate several dozens of first ones and then we have real duplicates 
of those that were processed manually. In other words, you can see thousands of examples we're not looking at. We just take several dozens in the beginning and then we see real trash that we're not looking at. How the benchmark results influence developers of SAS analyzers? Do they have any reaction to this? Well, we started working just recently just recently we have open sourced our benchmarks there were no publications however it's going to be interesting but generally speaking I've been making a URL to an article I've made a link to an article, yeah, this one these guys have conducted a big research for Java and it was noted by authors and Avasp and uh, many other tools, so they perceived it very positively. Well, we have not published anything publicly. All this will happen in the future. This is work in progress, as I've told you.